Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. My name is Mackenzie Livingston, and I am the Recruitment and Communication Director at Aurora Central Catholic High School. And basically what I do is I help students and families decide if ACC is going to be the right fit for them. So I do that in a multitude of different ways through different recruitment events like tonight's open house, um, our placement exam, registration, other recruiting events that normally happen in the past and we just weren't able to do them this year because they're usually social gatherings. <laughs> so um, aside from that though, on the communication side of things, I do all of the school social media and then also any communication that goes out to families or alumni and other community members usually comes from me. So that's kind of what I do in a nutshell. Um, I do have two very special guests joining us today, and I'm sure some of you watching have seen them before, but their names are Lauren and Ryan, and so they're going to go ahead really quick and introduce themselves, and then we will have time at the end for you to ask them questions if you have any, but they will then share their experience um, at ACC with you. But for now, they're just going to say their name, their grade, and a couple of things that they're involved in. Whoever wants to go first, can go. Um, I guess I'll on? start. <laughs> Go ahead. So I'm Lauren Fasola, a junior, and some things I'm involved in are, well, obviously student ambassadors, mm -hmm. um, key club, student council, I'm on the dance team, I do some of the musicals, and then I'm also in National Honor Society and Math Honor Society. Thank you. My name is Ryan Bohr. Um, Oh no, Ryan, it's kind of skipping. Can you hear him okay? I'm involved in a baseball team, student ambassador, society. Also a junior, I'm on the baseball team, a student ambassador. I'm also on Q society and math honor society. Awesome, thank you okay. so much. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and share my screen with all of you because I have a little um, presentation that I would like to show you that way you guys can get a, a better idea. I'm a visual person, so I like to, to see things when I'm being um, like on a webinar and whatnot, so that way I can kind of um, embrace all the information that's being shared. So if you've never been to ACC before, this is what it looks like on the outside. And just a couple of quick facts. So our mascot is the Chargers. Our colors are blue and gold, and we are a co-ed school. So we have both boys and girls. We have about 500 students total in the whole school, but we really try our best, and I'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about scheduling, um, but we try our best to keep our class size at about 19 students per class. And that really is so that students aren't as intimidated to ask the teacher questions, and the teacher also really gets to know the students um, very well in that more small, intimate class size. So we try to keep it right around there. Um, we are a Catholic school, obviously, hence the name, but students do not have to be Catholic to go to ACC. So that is very nice that we are able to accept anybody, no matter where they're at spiritually, academically even, and, and emotionally as well. So um, we are a college preparatory school, and I'm going to explain to you why in just a second. But it's very important for you to know. So if you're a student watching us right now, um, even if your parents are watching with you, it's really important for your whole family to really understand that high school is your time to figure out what it is that you like and what you don't like. And ACC will help you figure that out in a variety of different ways, both inside and outside the classroom. So a couple of things. Um, we have 19 different sports to choose from. And if we were in person at the open house, you would instantly be greeted with some material. And that would include a view book, which I did provide a digital copy to you guys in the follow-up email for the registration of this open house. So if you haven't clicked on it yet, um, please feel free to do so once this is over. And it's, it basically gives you a brief overview of school and it lists all of our sports and clubs that we have to offer here, which is really great. Um, you probably heard both, both Ryan and Lauren are very involved in, in extracurriculars and clubs and activities. And the reason that they can do that is because of our block scheduling, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. Um, but aside from the clubs and activities, we do help students really thrive inside the classroom as well as outside, like I just mentioned. But inside the classroom, these 
classes listed here are what we call electives. And so those are courses that students get to choose. It's not administration telling them that they have to take these. These really are to gear the students toward what they're interested in. That way, when they go to college or whatever it is that they decide outside of school, they can say, hey, I really enjoy taking, you know, architecture or that photography or that art class. Maybe that's something that I want to major or minor in in college. So they can kind of get a feel for it before they move on and, and are trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. Okay, so now for probably what will be the most important slide, I guess you want to, you could say, in my Prezi presentation for this open house. So block scheduling is truly what sets ACC apart from any other school in the Fox Valley area. Um, it is extremely unique and it's a very special type of curriculum that we offer. Um, so Lauren and Ryan, please feel free to jump in at any point and share your thoughts about this after I uh, explain exactly what it is. So block scheduling is where each student has four classes a day. They will take the exact same four Monday through Friday for an entire semester. Uh, each class is an hour and a half long. You get five minute passing periods and 25 minutes for lunch. So our day starts at eight and ends at 2.50. So um, sometimes, I don't know, do you guys remember what it was? for you guys earlier at um, St. Mary's in Plano? I believe it was around eight to three, kind of similar, but a little bit longer. Okay, mm -hmm. and did you have seven or eight subjects? Um, I think we had, I think probably seven periods around that. Yeah, I mean, okay. we mainly, we had like, we had like a section for English, math, and then we did like science and social studies like I think they were like 45 minutes each and then we would move around to go to like art one day and then like music the next. Got it. So. Like your different electives or special. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So imagine, especially if you are attending a school right now that has seven or eight subjects, imagine cutting that in half and only focusing on four. That's a huge game changer. <laughs> Um, the reason that we do it is because the block scheduling really serves two different types of students. And this is where the college preparatory piece of our curriculum comes into play. The first student it serves are for those students who might need a little bit of extra time to really absorb and divulge that information and understand it. And they have the opportunity then to ask questions of the teacher once they're done you know, lecturing or doing and providing the material because they're not rushed. You know, if you're only allowed 45 or 50 minutes in a period, that's not enough time <laughs> to really explain the material and answer questions because then students are going to go home and feel like they have to reteach themselves the curriculum. And that's not how it is at ACC because of that extra time. So typically what happens is the teacher will spend, you know, about 45 minutes explaining what it is that they're teaching, but then they'll leave that second half of class open for either group work or a project or, you know, doing homework. So that is why both Lauren and Ryan are able to participate in so many extracurricular clubs and sports. Um, and maybe, I don't know if you guys have a job or participate in service or whatnot, but they have time to do that because of the block scheduling. Um, so that's the first student that serves. The second is for those who want to double up in a subject. And the easiest way for me to explain this and to make it make sense to you is let's just say as a freshman, you take algebra one, which is a normal, very average freshman level math class. If you want your student to take geometry second semester, they could be done with a sophomore level math class by the end of their freshman year. So that's what we call doubling up in a subject. And students will do that in math and in science. Um, in order to get ahead and make room because now, you know, they don't have to take a math sophomore year unless they want to continue moving on with Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc or Trig, whatever it might be. Um, and that then allows them to take AP classes junior and senior year and earn college credit, which is amazing. Um, I know a couple of years ago, I was sitting at the senior award banquet and one student was graduating with their associate's degree in college as a senior in high school, which blew my mind. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is outstanding. So it is possible. Um, you don't have to do it, but the block scheduling does allow for students to do that. Did either of you guys double up in anything? Uh, oh. My sophomore year, I doubled up with geometry and algebra too. 
So, and it was really nice because sometimes like when you don't do a subject for like a whole semester and then you go to it the next year, you kind of like, it's not like on your brain and you're kind of like shut off from math. So it was really nice to be able to just like continue with that like math mindset into the next semester. Yeah, I agree. Sophomore year, I also took two math classes. I had um, Algebra 2 and Calc. So my mind was, it was stuck on math all year, which kept me sh more sharp thinking. And it, 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 uh, it made it able for me to get ahead of like the grade level, if that makes any sense. Yes. Kind of how Miss Livingston was explaining, so. You guys have anything to add about block scheduling? Um, I said it's just really nice because we also you do get time to work on homework a lot which mm -hmm. when you have like sports or a job or any other extracurricular activities it's really nice to be able to get some of that done in class it also allows for like a lot of extra time to be able to ask questions if you need help and it just make it doesn't feel like you're like rushing around all day like you feel like you're in your class you're still you're learning and you have like a good period of time I know, uh, so I started at like Yorkville High School my freshman year. And I, I mean, I eventually moved like a couple weeks in because it just like wasn't the right fit for me. But I had like eight classes a day and it felt like I was just running around all day long and nothing was really like really processing in my brain. So when I came to ACC and I only had, was focusing on four classes, it's really easy to like narrow in on the subject and really you pick up like and learn much better. Awesome. Thank you so much. For, I feel like you've been here since day one. So <laughs> forgot that you even <laughs> went to Yorkville for a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Do you have anything to add or do you feel like she kind of covered it? Um, I think that pretty much well covers it. Okay. Perfect. Then we will move on. Thank you guys for putting in your two cents about it. Um, so kind of going along with what Lauren just mentioned, I'm going to skip down to that third little bullet point there. Um, you know, sometimes no matter what high school you choose, it's definitely important to obviously choose a school that's going to provide your student or yourself um, with enough resources to succeed. You know, we all have goals. We all have a drive to do something and, and accomplish something. And so our main goal at ACC is to make that happen, whether that be, you know, in the classroom or outside the classroom. So if you do choose a different school other than ACC, please know that we do accept transfer students like Lauren. Like I technically wouldn't consider you like an actual transfer student because you, you came to school so quickly after those first couple of weeks. However, if you are a student that chooses to go through, you know, a full year or even two years at another high school and you, you're just like, this is not the right fit. I'm not succeeding. I'm not feeling like I'm at home. We do accept transfers. So that is something that um, we, I wanted to incorporate because about five to 10% of our incoming class does consist of those. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, going back to the top though, I know I feel like I'm talking a lot about college and you know life after high school, but really that high school is to, supposed to prepare you for that. And, and so I wanna touch on it just a little bit more. So a hundred percent, which is obviously like, you can't get any better than that. A hundred percent of our students do get accepted to their four-year college or university that they, they choose to attend. And the reason that we have such a high acceptance rate is because our counselors are working with our students from freshman year. Those conversations are already starting about what do you want to do, what do you want to be, what are your goals very early on, so that way the counselors can lead them to take specific classes that are meant for whatever industry that they might want to go into, and then they can help them apply to the colleges that best suit their academic capabilities. So that's why it's so high. <laughs> um, counselors are wonderful. The students have to meet with them in order to register for classes the following year. So we don't really give them an option not to succeed, <laughs> which is great. Um, secondly, we, and I, I apologize, I don't have the class of 2020 numbers because we weren't able to implement the data kind of um, tools that we use to gather this information because we weren't physically in session. But I do have numbers for the class of, excuse me, 2019. And that is that um, they received $9 million in scholarships to attend the college or university that they chose to go to. And I know that that's underreported. I know we didn't get every single student's information, 
because some students actually after graduation then kind of figure out what where they're going to go and, and accept um, their offer later. So I know that it's not 100% accurate, but it, I, so I know it's more than 9 million, which is still a huge number. So again, scholarships, you know, there's so many different ones out there that our counseling department, we use Naviance, which is a software for college planning, um, and they really help. I don't know if you guys have used it yet. Have you had to use it? Um, I know like that, um, like, I think it was the first day of school, we had like our homeroom and mm -hmm. we got a presentation from the counselors. They talked about it and mm -hmm. I know there's like some really good resources on there. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. But. Sure. Um, anyway, so that's what we use um, to help students figure out what scholarships that they should be applying for. Speaking of scholarships, um, that was kind of a nice little segue. Let's I wanna bring it back to ACC and the cost of our tuition. So I'm gonna take this link here would take you directly to our website. Um, so to go there, if you wanted to take a look at it after the webinar is over at any point, you can just go to our website, hover over admission and click tuition and financial aid and it will bring you right here. And so you will see that um, I do not have the fees for next year um, po posted yet because our Council of Administration isn't meeting until November to discuss those. So those will be released um, next month <laughs> in like a couple days. So um, I can tell you though that in the past, and I've been in ACC for five years now, the trend has always been, and as long as it's keeping within the exact same um, realm, we never go over a $200 increase in tuition. So my best educated guess would be you can expect um, the parish rate to be anywhere between 6325 and 7325 depending on where you fall within this um, chart. So if you belong, and I'm, I'm not sure how many people we have watching tonight that fall within the tuition parish rate. But if you if you do belong to any of these parishes listed here in bold, you would qualify for this rate. If you do not, then you would qualify for these rates, okay? Um, so that's just something that you can kind of plan for. Best case scenario, you know, it's gonna be about a $200 increase. So don't quote me on it, but that's just what has happened before. And then we have our fees, which are all um, very individualized, depending on, you know, if your student wants to play a sport, um, obviously that wouldn't apply for a while, um, and then class fees as well. The biggest thing I wanna to touch on here on this part of the website is our financial aid. So we do offer our own individual financial aid, and I highly recommend all families to apply for it. Um, there really is no, cap where we say you have to you know make this much or if you don't make this amount of money per year then you qualify because it is truly based on the pool of applicants that we have every single year so you will fill out a financial aid application if you choose to do that every year because we realize everybody's financial situations change very quickly and sometimes out of the blue i think this whole past year everyone's kind of learned that and so um, we recognize that and we want to help as many families as we can. So that's why we ask you to do it every single year. Um, I can tell you that in the past we have not awarded more than half of tuition. So that is kind of like the most that we would award just so you can kind of plan best case scenario. Um, and then another really great thing that we offer to our families that qualify for financial aid is something called the student work program. And that's where students can work before or after school um, or during Christmas break or in the summer or during spring break and they actually will earn minimum wage toward their tuition which I think is very important because then that student has a hand in their education and I think it really helps them realize that sending your student to a, a private Catholic school is a sacrifice and it's a privilege and they kind of can then feel that and realize like my parents are working really hard to send me to this school and in turn by them also working they kind of it sometimes gives them a little bit more of that extra push to be successful too so um, it's a very nice program that we offer um, so that's always of um, up for grabs too and then scholarships so i'm actually going to skip ahead two slides that will come back to the laptop but scholarships are awarded based on our placement exam so if you want to get out your calendar and mark this down or take a picture of the screen, whatever you have to do, um, our scholarship qualifying placement test will be taking place on Saturday, December 5th. So it is from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. This will be an in-person exam. 
we will have every single student assigned to a classroom this time and assigned to a desk where previously it's just kind of like everyone line up and we you know count as many people as we can fit in a classroom it will not be like that this year due to covid we're going to make it as safe as we possibly can um everyone worries about the snacks i don't know why but everyone's worried about snacks and so we will definitely still have those they'll be individually wrapped so you don't have to worry about that um, there is a $30 fee associated with the test and you can pre-register and pre-pay for your student online. That also was a link that I sent in the um, confirmation email for this open house, but you will also get it as a in our thank you email as well, or you could just go strictly to our website and sign up. And then parent tours of the school will be available as well. And those are, pre, you must pre-sign up for that. We have them spaced out um, in a specific time frame during the placement test. So that is something that we are offering to parents only. Um, and then, so the scholarships that we have available, I'm gonna take you back to the financial aid tab. And that is listed right here in the PDF, which again, you can always go back and re-look at. But essentially we offer um, these to the top scoring students on the placement test, as well as the dollar amount listed. So I won't go through every single one in detail because you guys can certainly read it and you don't want to waste your time. But if you're interested in learning more, um, that's exactly where you can find it. All right, so I do wanna go back to our technology. So every single freshman student will receive a laptop when they come to ACC. It is a one-time, $420 fee for the laptop. It comes fully loaded with all of the software and programs that your student will need to do projects and tests and anything at ACC. Um, it is the Acer Travelmate Spin. So that's the brand that we are offering. And as of next fall, we will 100% be one-to-one. -one. So every single student in the building will have this laptop. And then it's theirs to keep. So you don't have to give it back at the end of the year or even at the end of the four years. It is your family and your student's laptop to keep forever. So that's kind of nice. Um, I did want to kind of let you know also, if you haven't already done so, you may schedule a shadow day for your eighth grade student. If you are a sixth or a seventh grader watching, um, we welcome you guys to come. Usually we welcome you to come to any recruitment event. Um, obviously this year we're doing everything virtual, but um, the shadow days are strictly just for eighth graders. So that's something that you can look forward to in the next couple of years, depending on where you're at. But if you are in eighth grade, you are welcome to shadow Lauren or Ryan or anybody else that you may know that attend ACC. And if you don't know anybody, that's okay. We have 115 student ambassadors this year. I don't know if you guys knew that, um, but we have a lot of ambassadors to choose from. And I typically try to pair them up with someone who has similar interests as your student. That way they have things in common and things to talk about throughout the day. This year, they are being offered on Tuesdays and Fridays only, and we are allowing one student to shadow per day unless the students attend the same school. Due to COVID, we're just trying to eliminate the cross-contamination of different environments if students have been in different schools. So that's our rule for this year. It's normally not like that. Um, I am booked the second week in December. So um, we are, if you want to, you know, have your student come in shadow, before Christmas, still please email me and give me a call because maybe the, there's already a student scheduled from your child's school and we can then accommodate you earlier than that. So something to keep in mind. And then registration for classes takes place after you receive your placement exam results and that will happen at the end of January. But you don't have to worry about those dates. There will be plenty of information in the packet that your student receives after the placement test. All right, now before we get to um, Lauren and Ryan kind of telling us a little bit more about their experience at ACC, I just wanted to leave you with a final little wrap up piece that our goal at ACC is to have your students succeed. You know, we don't ever want a student to feel like they're left behind or not feeling successful. So by the time they graduate, we want them to spiritually grow if that's something that they're interested in, um, have the necessary tools to get wherever it is that they want to go and prepare them for the future no matter what that might mean for them. So that is exactly what we try to do and encompass in all of our students um, during their time with us at ACC. So now um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna um, open it up to Lauren and Ryan and they are just gonna share with all of you um, their favorite part of ACC, why they chose ACC, 
and then any advice that they have for the sixth, seventh, or eighth grade students that are watching tonight. So, Lauren, why don't you start us off? Okay. So, I would say my favorite part about ACC is probably, like, that it is a smaller school, so the class sizes are smaller, and then it's just not so intimidating. Like, it's pretty easy to find your way around, and it's really easy to make friends, and it's just really, like, loving and kind environment and it's it's just like one big family um why i chose acc was because well ryan is actually my cousin <laughs> so he went I'm here back. and then um my other cousins they are sophomores this year so my family goes here and i just really want i went to st mary's with them too st mary's plano so i just wanted to be able to go to school with them again and then it also, it's just very different from public school. And I think ACC is just a really good fit for me. Um, and the piece of advice I would have for incoming freshmen is just get um, involved in as many like clubs and activities as you can, because that's the best way to make friends. Good advice. Thank you so much. Okay, Ryan, your turn. Yeah, one thing I like about ACC a lot too is how much the teachers care about you, because with the large amount of time that they have in the block, they're able to explain the topic pretty deeply to each student if they don't understand it. Where as to a public school or just a 45 minute standard class, they, the students might be leaving there like not understanding anything at all. And then they get home and they're stressed because they don't know their homework and stuff like that. But at our school, it's pretty easy to get additional help and understand the lesson within the long time period. I chose ACC because, well, the block schedule, I like that because I could get ahead in math and balance a heavy schedule pretty easily. And also how it's co-ed, because going to a all boys school just wouldn't, wouldn't be the thing for me. I feel like it's more social if you're with both the genders and, you know, just everybody. And any advice that I would have to incoming freshmen would be just don't be as nervous as I was freshman year because it's not so intimidating once you find your way around and you'll meet people. You, you're not going to be late to class. The teachers cut a lot of slack. There's really nothing to worry about. So just don't be too nervous coming in freshman year. To kind of echo what both of them were saying and also what Ryan just mentioned about being nervous, you know, it's such a natural feeling, especially when you come into a new environment to feel anxious and to maybe worry like, what if I can't find my locker or I can't get it open or I can't find my classes. And if you were able to be at ACC right now in person, visually you would really realize and figure out it is not that big of a school. Um, the first floor I like to tell people is a circle and the second floor is a U with a staircase right in the middle. So it is very easy to get around and then the locker wings are kind of on either side of that staircase. So you will not get lost. And even if you do, everybody is so kind and genuine that you could just ask someone for help and they will definitely assist you. Um, and then to Lauren's point about getting involved, um, you know, it's so, it is very easy to do because we normally in the fall, right before school starts, we invite all freshmen to come to something called Charge into ACC. And it's a day, it's actually only a couple hours, where you get to come in, you get your laptop, and um, you're broken up into small groups. And it's a, a social event. So we weren't able to do it this past year. But before you go home, you get to go around and visit all of the different clubs and extracurriculars that we have to offer. And if anything looks interesting to you, you can put your name down on the piece of paper. And then that club moderator, who's a teacher, will email you because you'll get a school email. Um, when that first meeting is going to be. And then you can go to the first meeting and figure out if that's something you wanna join. And if it is, great. If it's not, that's okay too. So we really don't give you an opportunity to not get involved. Um, and there's also so many summer camps. If you are a sports person or you wanna be in the drama, I know that um, Mr. Knoll has drama camps and, and everything in the summer. So it's easy to meet people. And so, um, you know, we don't make it difficult for you to get involved. And that's pretty much, I think, what everybody does suggest as a freshman is get involved, get involved, get involved. So it's very rare that a student isn't involved in at least one thing. So, all right, does anybody have any questions for either myself or Lauren or Ryan? You guys can put it in the Q&A part or the chat portion 
if you see those two icons on your phone or on your laptop, um, please feel free. We have, we're ending right at 7.30, which is normally when we end. So we're making good time. So if you guys don't have any questions, that's totally fine too. But do either of you have any last minute words for anybody that you would like to say? I'll I think that like, covered everything. Uh, go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> Oh, no, I'll just say I think I think we covered everything. I think Miss Livingston did a good job explaining how everything worked. Um, I was just gonna say like that if you ever have any questions, there pretty much any teacher will answer for you. Freshmen, also the two counselors and the campus minister, both their offices are right down the freshman hallway, so you have really easy access to them. Also, if you go into the office, they'll answer pretty much any question for you. And in the morning, Father Etheridge is usually standing right by the stairs. So he's yes. like a nice friendly face to see in the morning and you can also ask him anything. So everyone's just really friendly and open and they can pretty much answer any question you would have. Awesome, thank you. Okay, we do have two questions. So the first question is, what tutoring options do students have? So, um, Ryan and I were both part of Math Honor Society. I know in the library, pretty much every like morning before before school and then afternoon after school for 20 minutes, there's people in the library that you can come help with math. Yeah, for the math, I think that is uh, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Should be all year round. And yeah, just 20 minutes before or after school. And if you did need help in another subject, I've always been one to just reach out to a teacher and say, hey, can we meet before school for 15 minutes or so? You know, it doesn't take that long. And they'll, they'll, most of them will always be willing to, they're, they're always willing to meet you and help you, help you to learn it better, so. Yes, and also there are students um, that have accommodation plans, 504s, IEPs, and so um, really, uh, the nice thing is with the placement test that we offer, it is just that. It is not an entrance exam. So we rarely tell a family that, you know, ACC might not be the best fit. Like we might not be the best fit for your student strictly because we might not have the resources that a public school might have just to make sure that your child is successful. So that rarely happens. I've been there for five years and it's only, it, I can count on one hand the amount of times that it's happened. So, um, you know, we work with our counselors are wonderful. We do offer a variety of accommodations. So if your student is one of those students who has a 504 IEP or accommodations, just let us know. We'll review it. And then we can sit down and talk about the, the accommodations that we are able to offer. So I did want to mention that. And then the other question we have is this year, were you able to do the play? And what about sports? So I know the dance, I'm on the dance team and we've been practicing since the summer. Um, over the summer, we were just outside as much as possible. And I know like volleyball and stuff like that, they were all trying to stay outside. Um, I think the winter sports, all right, some of them are starting to practice. Um, we just have to wear masks the whole time, which I mean, we do at school. Everyone's pretty used to that now. And then about the play, I know they did have auditions for it and I'm pretty sure they're working on it right now. Again, you just have to wear masks, but other than that, pretty much everything is running like normal. And yeah, to touch on sports, I know last year, the sophomore year, kind of when COVID like started to flare up in about March, April, baseball season would have followed in the spring. So we didn't have a season last year, but this year we have been practicing in the fall just, you know, to get out there. And we're, we don't have to wear masks just because on the baseball field, everybody's pretty far apart. It's not like basketball. I know some of the other sports are taking it. They're getting hit a little harder. Like basketball, they're doing less and they have to wear masks because it's, you know, a closer contact sport. Yeah. So I think it just depends on what the activity is. But in most cases, they're definitely, they're always going to be doing safety precautions. And like for baseball, they do temperatures and hand sanitizer stuff like that just to keep it safe but mm -hmm. they're trying to get us out there so yes and yep. forever changing and evolving so um you know the fall tennis and golf and cross country were the three sports that were allowed to participate 
um, where football and boys soccer was not. So um, that and volleyball. Did I say volleyball already? Maybe I did, but maybe not. Um, so those were the ones that were postponed. So um, I know that the IHSA is very much on top of it and they are working hand in hand with the Illinois Department of Health. And, um, you know, we're constantly always, always in the know and doing our very best to keep everybody safe. So um, the other question, oh, what about band? Do either of you know about band? And if that's happening? Um, I'm pr I know they practice in the morning. I see them and like, hear them when I walk by. So I think they're pretty much just like, they're still practicing like normal. They're just more spread out. And when you can wear your mask, you are. So other than that, I think band is pretty much like normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Everything. I mean, you know, everybody is doing a phenomenal job. I know Father Etheridge, who's our principal, if you guys don't know, is extremely pleased with our parents and our students and our teachers and how the whole ACC community has handled COVID and everything that it's thrown at us. Um, it's been phenomenal and I think we've all come together more closely in a safe way, if that makes sense. <laughs> so um, I think it, it's great. So we're doing the best that we can and I'm really happy that we're in school. So, all right, those were the three questions that we had. Thank you guys for asking questions. It makes it a little bit more fun to interact and um, feel like we're in person. So like I said, you will receive a thank you follow-up email from me and in it will include the placement exam link for you to pre-register your student. You can sign up for a parent tour for that day and then you can also actually take a virtual tour, which I know is in the other email when you signed up as well. Um, you can go through every single hallway. You can go into the gym and the library and the cafeteria and actually feel like you're at ACC. And then there's also a recruitment highlight video that you can watch as well, which just kind of recaps ACC as a whole um, prior to the pandemic. So I don't want you to think that this was filmed this summer because <laughs> um, no one's wearing masks in it. But it was a couple summers ago. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate you spending your half hour with us tonight. You both get service hours for this. So please make sure that you have me sign them. I will be at school tomorrow and we'll go from there. So thank you guys so much and have a great night. Bye. <laughs>